The Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge has some of, if not the best mobile cameras on any phone to date. When you think of smartphone photography or just optics on a smartphone, there's two manufacturers that really come to mind. You think of Apple and then you think of Samsung. Now, Samsung has really been breaking some grounds lately when it comes to the optics they have been putting on their cameras. You know, the S7 and the S7 Edge feature optical image stabilization. It has an aperture of f1.7. It does feature dual pixel autofocusing, which is a first on any mobile phone. It's the same technology that Canon has been using on their high-end DSLRs as well as their high-end video production cameras. Very fast and very accurate. Now that camera hump that we all criticize the S6 for having is gone now with the S7 and the S7 Edge. So now the phone can actually sit flat on the table, but it still has that optical image stabilization. Now you do have a single LED flash, which works okay. I mean, it's not the true tone flash that you're gonna find on the iPhone, but it does the job. I'm sure most of you guys know that megapixels don't mean everything. And despite Samsung going down from 16 to 12 megapixels, their image quality has gone up. What I mean is, even though they've gone down in that megapixel count, they've actually increased the overall size of those pixels to 1.4 microns, giving you better low light results without compromising on quality whatsoever. And their new sensor and the new camera is every bit as comparable to the 16 megapixel camera found on the Galaxy S6. The only thing is if you do a lot of cropping with your pictures, so say you go on vacations a lot and you take a lot of landscape shots and you really like to crop in and get in there, you're gonna be able to find that the Galaxy S6 or the Note 5 can do that much better than the S7. But in terms of everything else, the S7 is a much better camera. The camera on the front is five megapixels. It features an aperture of f1.7. And just like the rear side camera, it's one of the best that I have used to date. I don't take a whole lot of selfies, but I had to take some for this particular video. And the images that I had coming off of this thing were spectacular. And if I did take selfies, I would love taking them with this phone. Digging into the camera UI, Samsung has done a great job at minimalizing the UI experience. With the Galaxy S5 and previous generations, um, it was just very, very thick and it had a lot of unwanted features. And they've really done a great job at toning those back and giving you a more cleaner UI. And that really started with the S6 and it's just gotten better with the S7. At the top, you have your basic features. The very first one is like a cogwheel and that's your settings tab. And we'll explore that in just one minute. Uh, you also have your resolutions and ratios. So you, depending on the ratio that you wanna take your picture in, depends on the resolution that you can choose from, but you can select which one you want right there. You also have your flash, which you can toggle on, off, and auto, and you have your timer. So you can set a timer if you uh, want to be in the shot and you wanna use the rear-facing camera, or you just wanna get ready for the shot using the front-facing. You also have your HDR mode, which you can toggle on, off, and auto, and it gives you live HDR so you can see what the image is going to look like right there on the screen before you actually take it. The next one is effects, and that's basically different filters like Instagram type filters or picture profile type things. Um, I really don't tend to use them, but they're there if you want to. The last thing is a little arrow. If you tap that, it will actually shrink all of those little functions into the side so you don't have to see them all the time. Now going into your settings tab, you have different settings for different features. So the very first one is your video size. So you can capture UHD 3840 by 2160, and you can do this at generally 30 frames per second, but you can adjust the shutter speed. Um, however, it doesn't give you full manual control in terms of those frames per second, you're only adjusting the shutter speed. You have quad HD, you have full HD 60 frames per second, or you can do full HD at 30 frames per second, you have one-to-one -to -one HD and VGA. All of those resolutions towards the bottom are very minimal resolutions, not gonna take up a lot of space, but they're not gonna give you very good quality either. Now, motion photo is something that Nokia has been doing for a while, and Apple started doing with their live photos. Um, it, what it does is it takes an image and then it records a short clip before that image to almost bring that photo to life, giving you like almost like a GIF effect. Um, it's cool, but I tend to not use it, but it's there if you want it. So below that, you have tracking for autofocusing. And what this does is, is exactly what it sounds like. So you find your subject on your screen, you tap it, and your autofocusing capabilities built into this phone are going to track that subject. And if you factor that in with the dual pixel technology, it does a damn fine job. And I was actually really, really surprised at how good of a job this phone does versus uh, the previous generation. 
Now the Galaxy S6 did a great job at tracking, but this one just takes it one step further because of that advanced autofocusing capability built into it. Then you'll come across a video stabilization tab. Uh, a lot of the times it's going to be grayed out because it depends on what mode you're shooting in, uh, but you're looking at software stabilization. The camera itself still has optical image stabilization built into it, and that does not get turned off. So no matter what, you're gonna get something stabilized. It's just when you have this enabled, it's going to be a little bit better. Then you have things like grid lines and location tags, things that are self-explanatory that you pretty much see on every phone, so I don't need to cover. And then you have your shooting methods. Now this is all about voice control. So with voice control, different verbal commands are going to trigger the camera. In other words, you can say smile or cheese, and then it's going to take a photo. Or you can say record video, and then it will start recording. So it's great if you're trying to be um, hands-free, so you might have your phone mounted on a tripod and you wanna take a a family picture using the rear facing camera, you can do that. Review pictures allows you to review a photo after you've taken it. This is great if you plan on taking single shots and you have time in between your other shots, but if you're just trying to uh, do burst and bust out photos, I would not have this enabled. Then you have save as raw file. Now this feature is a bit finicky. In other words, you have to be in pro mode in order for this to be enabled, which is not a big deal. But then you also cannot be using any of these special effects or filters. If you have any of those enabled other than just being on normal, it's not going to work. And the other thing is if you exit out the camera app and then come back into it, it's more than likely going to start you back up on automatic. So you gotta switch back to pro mode and make sure that it's saving as JPEG and RAW. Sometimes I have found in my testing, even though I switch back to pro mode, because I might've had maybe a filter going on in automatic mode, it kicked me out of the ability to save it as a raw file, and I had to go in and re-enable it. So if you want to continuously take raw photos, you're gonna have to continuously to make sure this setting is turned on. Now when it's turned on under pro mode, as you are taking photos, it's going to say that the file will be saved as JPEG and raw. If it doesn't say that, then this setting is not enabled. Now you do have the ability to pick the storage location. So whether or not you wanna save your photos and videos to your phone or to your SD card, you can decide that right there in the settings. You can also determine whether or not you want the volume keys to trigger zoom in or zoom out, trigger a video or take a photo. And last but not least, you can toggle the shutter sound on and off. I generally just keep mine off because the sound is pretty annoying. Next up, we're gonna jump into modes. Now modes is where all the magic happens when it comes to Samsung phones and their camera UI. Now by default, you're on auto. Auto is exactly what it says. It's going to automatically determine your white balance, your shutter speed, your ISO, your exposure to give you a properly balanced image. And it does a great job. In fact, this is one of the few phones I can say, it doesn't matter if you're in auto or pro, if you pull this thing out and let the camera decide exactly what it needs to, like 90% of the time, actually I would go as far as saying 95% of the time, you're going to get a usable image. Pro mode is by far my personal choice when it comes to these modes. I absolutely love the photos that you can get with it. You can really just drop down that shutter speed and get those light trails, or you can get better low light results by dropping down that shutter speed, and you don't have to worry about noise because you won't be at a high ISO. So anyways, if you're looking to um, perfect your smartphone photography game, I definitely suggest learning pro mode and going from there. Selective focus is exactly what it says, and it gives you the option to select your focusing point after you've taken the photo, and it takes a series of three photos to do this. So it takes one closest, one about mid-ground, and then one in the foreground, and then it gives you the ability to swap focusing points, and it's just, it's a gimmicky but cool feature. Panorama is something that I don't need to discuss. It's been around forever. All you guys know exactly what that is. Video collage takes a series of four video clips and then pieces them together in a collage, and each video clip can consist of a maximum of six seconds. Again, gimmicky, but cool if you like that type of stuff. Live broadcast is a feature that was implemented in the Galaxy Note 5 and has made its way to the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge but I just can't seem to get it to work. I always get a network connection error or it's just constantly asking me to sign into my YouTube account. Slow motion video is exactly what it states. It's slow motion video. It has improved over last year, but it's still not on the same level as the iPhone. We are getting better. It's just not there yet. I don't understand what it is about Android devices and being able to produce excellent or great slow motion quality, but um, it is getting better. 
Virtual shot is like a reverse photosphere. You see, with photosphere, you actually take several images and piece them together of your surroundings, and then it forms like a 3D perspective. So when you move your phone, you're actually viewing everything around you, like almost like an interactive panorama, but just one step further. But with virtual shot, you are not the center. Instead, your subject is center and you're taking a bunch of images around your subject. So as you move your phone around, you're going around the subject. So it's almost like a 3D perspective of whatever it is you're looking at without you being the center point, if that makes any sense. Food is self-explanatory. If you're eating and you like to take pictures of your food before you eat it or while you're eating it, go to food and it'll make that food look a little bit more presentable whenever you post it online rather than just one big sloppy mess. The next feature is hyperlapse. And I've heard a lot of people say that hyperlapse is nothing but a gimmicky or Samsung's version of time-lapse, and that's not so. They're actually two different things, and I really wanted to discuss this real quick to give you guys an idea of the difference, and it mainly has to do with motion. Now, all the information I'm about to tell you can be found at the source in the description of this video. You just click on that link, it will take you over, and you can verify all this information yourself. Now, the biggest difference is the action in a scene with a time lapse is sped up and the camera is either static or moving in a short distance very slowly. That's the reason why a lot of the times you see a very slow slider movement and then you see the time lapse. So it's a very slow movement that is sped up so it looks like everything is moving very fast and very fluent. Now with the hyperlapse, there is no limitation. So you don't have to have a static or short distance. You can actually carry your camera and film a time-lapse comparison so that way it doesn't limit you in what you can shoot. It enables the camera to be moved over considerable distances and being handheld. So it's like a handheld time-lapse. To me, hyperlapse is more suitable for a mobile device versus time-lapse and the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge does a great job especially when you pair it with their optical image stabilization. There's a few other modes that you can download such as beauty mode, dual camera mode, the animated GIF mode, you can also do a rear cam selfie and there's many many more. They're all free and you can download them straight from the Samsung or Galaxy store. You guys may have noticed that there's not a whole lot of video samples and that's because I'm working on a very special project. Some of you know what it is because I reached out to you but a lot of you don't and and you're going to want to stay tuned for it because I promise you, you're going to love it. So real quick to recap, the gripes about the camera are simple. Though you do get manual controls, I don't feel the manual controls do video mode enough justice. I feel like they could have done a little bit better and they could have really strengthened that area, making it nearly the perfect UI and perfect camera on any smartphone. Noise reduction and sharpening can be overly aggressive and it's something that Samsung has been known for. Either it smooths out the image too much or it over sharpens it, making it look almost fake. But they've done a great job and though it's minor, it's still one of my gripes. The finicky process of enabling RAW has got to be the biggest thing for me. I hate having to double check to see if it's enabled. I wanna be able to launch pro mode, it's automatically enabled regardless of whatever I did in auto mode and start shooting RAW images. It's just a little bit tedious and I think with a update or two, it could be perfect. The dual pixel autofocusing works great. Um, I think that it is state of the art, it is groundbreaking. I think they've done a great job by bringing it to this phone. However, it still hunts a lot during video mode. So if you don't lock onto your subject, you can get a lot of uh, focus hunting and it can really ruin your overall video. Of course, last but not least, it's going to be slow motion. Though I respect Samsung for making it better than previous generations, and it's probably the best slow motion found on an Android device to date, it's still not on par with anything Apple has made, and I think it really needs some improvements. But I don't think it's a Samsung issue. I think it's more Android, because I have yet to use an Android device that had excellent slow motion. So um, other than those few minor things, and really those gripes are just things that I'm being very specific and nitpicking about, the camera itself is magnificent. You're not going to be disappointed. It's the best camera I have used on a, any mobile phone to date. I mean, I haven't used the HTC 10 or the G5, but from what I've heard from others, this is better and it's definitely the holding the crown for smartphone photography. If you guys enjoyed this video, do drop me a thumbs up to show your support. Go ahead and share it with all your friends, family, dogs, cats, neighbors, squirrels, anything that you wanna share with, share this video. Follow me on all my social media connections, and of course, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Be easy.